Why Am I Not Surprised? Written by Stacey Wrights and read by Eleanor Elizabeth. Summary. When Bakugo Kotsky gets hit by an age reversion quirk, no one is surprised to find out that he's still an asshole. Unfortunately, one Midoriya Izuku is stuck taking care of him to repay the favour. It's a good thing his Deku makes a good wife. Here, he's all yours. Midoriya looked up when Aizawa showed himself into the common room, surprised to see him hanging out in the dorm area. Usually, when he showed up, it was a sign that something horrific was going on, and no doubt someone was going to be in detention for a month. Aizawa-sensei? He asked, frowning slightly. What's wrong? His eyes slowly lowered as Aizawa shoved something at him, and he froze for a moment before slowly setting his phone down and sliding off the couch to get closer. Kachan? Deku! Finally, someone who will listen to me! Midoriya contemplated him briefly, already nodding stupidly as he examined the chubby cheeks and strangely adorable pout on his lips. Yeah, I, I will. What do you need, Kachan? Tell them I don't want to wear stupid diapers. I'm not a baby. I'm sure they know, Midoriya laughed. You probably told them very clearly, right? Bakugo huffed stubbornly, and Midoriya looked up at Aizawa in hopes of an explanation, surprised to see him holding Bakugo's phone out. He was smart enough to recall the interaction, at least. He had the oh-so-brilliant idea of going to see that de-aging villain alone, without telling anyone from the school, to try and get information for his incident report. Of course he did, Midoriya sighed. Is there anything interesting in the recording? Well, we learn that it doesn't take physical contact to activate, otherwise only that the quirk lasts for up to two days, which we already knew, and the reason he was there. I'm assuming you don't want me to call his parents, seeing as I've met his mother, so consider it your turn to deal with whatever this is. Please try to keep him from disrupting class like he somehow did with you. I'll do my best, Ozawa sensei At least this one doesn't scream. With that, he walked away, not bothering to even glance back at them, and Midoriya grinned when he looked down to Bakugo's pout again. Sorry, Kachan, how much do you know about all of this? The weird guy told me in the car, he huffed. How did you get into UA? My quirk came late, he lied easily. I was almost five when I got it. Weird, huh? I already told you that I would protect you. You don't need one. No quirk you got was going to be better than mine anyway. My wife doesn't need a quirk with me around. Um, pretty sure I'm going to be your husband, Kajan? No way. I'm the husband, so you got to be the wife. With a fond smile, Midoriya nodded, unable to resist ruffling the soft blonde spikes before him. You're right. Sorry, I'm an idiot. Well, duh. It's fine. You have me to look after you. Do you know how lucky you are? I do. Thank you, Kachan. I'm super lucky and super grateful. People were starting to trickle into the common area as they caught wind of the discussion, and the moment Kirishima arrived, peace was broken. This is the best day of my life, he grinned. Hey, do you remember me? Who's the idiot? Bakugo asked, pulling a face. Do I know him, Deku? Hmm, good question, Midoriya smirked. Do you know him? Let me think. Midoriya, bro, come on! Don't take this away from me. I'll be nice, I swear. Oh, now I remember, Midoriya grinned. This is Kirishima. He's one of our classmates. You and him are kind of friends, I guess. Kind of? Bakugo, you're my best friend. He's not a very good liar, Bakugo frowned. Why does he want to trick me, Deku? What do you mean? My best friend wouldn't call me Bakugo, he explained, as if the name tasted awful in his mouth. No one calls me Bakugo. You can't even spell Bakugo, and you're going to be my wife. You're right, Midoriya grinned. I think Kirishima is just worried you'd be offended, since you didn't remember him. Right, Kirishima? Oh, right. Sorry, Katsuki. Bakugo still looked at him disbelievingly. And in a flash, Kaminari shoved him aside, beaming from ear to ear. Sorry about him, Ka-chan. He just likes to tease. Do you remember me? I'm Denki. No thanks. 
Bakugo turned to walk away, ignoring the laughter that erupted behind him. Kaminari staring at him with the most offended expression Midoriya had ever seen on him. Too late, he realised he didn't know where he was going, and he pulled a face as he tried to quickly cover it, not willing to show weakness, even for a moment. Deku, we're going to my room, come on! Midoriya gave the group a sheepish smile as he hurried after the little legs, pointing him towards the elevator. Sorry guys, he offered. It's just easier to go along with him. It won't be for long. He's a toddler, Ida pointed out. How much harm could he really do? Bakugo was finally settling down, surrounded by the familiar possessions. They had stopped by Midoriya's room to grab a few All Might toys, and now they sat together on Bakugo's bedroom floor, legs twisted aside to give them room to play. It was just like old times. Bakugo didn't even seem to notice that Midoriya had become twice his height and four times his age. All of it was for naught, though, when they heard a knock at the door. Is it true? Uraraka squeaked when Midoriya cracked open the door. I need to see him. The gaggle of girls elbowed past him before he could stop it, ignoring his protest as Uraraka scooped the tiny Bakugo up from the floor excitedly. Uraraka, he... With a resounding crash that rocked the building, Uraraka dropped the boy, clutching her face in her hands. Already has his quirk, Midoriya finished pointlessly. Don't you remember that I kept mine? Even if he'd been two years younger, he'd probably still have had it. That hurt, Uraraka whined. Haven't you learnt yet? You don't just pick up every toddler you see. Yaoyorozu was much more careful as she approached, smiling as she offered Bakugo a hand. You probably don't remember us, right? My name is Yaoyorozu Momo, this is Uraraka Uchaku, Asui Suyu, and Jiro Kyoka. Hagakure Turo is behind them as well, but her quirk is invisibility. Hi! She waved a gloved hand. I'm here! Bakugo scowled as he considered them, folding his tiny arms. What's yours? Mine? Quack, Midoriya clarified when Bakugo just waited pointedly. Oh, I can create things from my body. That's a dumb quirk, Bakugo grumbled. You can't even fight with that. Ka-chan, be nice! Next! he said stubbornly, ignoring Midoriya's reproach. Are any of you interesting? Kachan, Midoriya cringed. I'm so sorry. He was kind of an asshole. I'm telling your mom you swore, Bakugo informed him, pointing an accusatory finger his way. I'm not going to marry you if you talk like that. It's not pretty. Oh, you're still getting married? Asui said with a grin. I'm glad. Of course we're still getting married, Bakugo scowled. I've got to protect the stupid nerd. I promised. I appreciate it, Karchan, Midoriya assured him. What are you anyway, some kind of frog? Exactly. That's your whole quirk, your part frog. Yes. Lame. What about you, round face? And I thought older Bakugo was bad, Uraraka sighed. I make things float. Seriously, Bakugo sneered. You make things float. It's actually really cool, Karchan. She removes gravity from an object, and then she can send them hurtling back to the ground at will. Still can't fight for real with it, Bakugo argued. Invisible is invisible. What about you? Earphones? Jiro shrugged, gesturing towards them. Music and sound and stuff. Just as Bakugo went to open his mouth, she grinned. And I whack people with them too. Bakugo snorted at that, but he didn't complain for once, and Midoriya sighed at him as he sat back down with the figurines. I'm really sorry, he said again softly. He hadn't developed a verbal filter at that age. Good to know our normal Bakugo is actually being nice, in some sense, Uraraka sighed. I actually thought we were almost friends. You were, you are, just not for a few more years. Well, good luck, Midoriya, Jiro said, surprisingly cheerfully, showing herself out. Have fun. It took him a moment to catch on, as the others followed her out, and he stumbled over his words for a moment. Really? I have to do it all by myself? He did it for you, Uraraka pointed out. What can you make from your body? Bakugo asked out of the blue, without even looking back. Anything? Just about. Do you want to be my friend? Huh? Uh, sh sure. Yes, of course I do. Do you need something, Bakugo? Ew. He pulled a face. My friends don't call me that. Why do people keep doing that? S sorry, Ka- Ka-chan? He grunted his approval, and Yaoyorozu fluttered red as the girls behind her cooed happily. 
the weird teacher, Bakugo began, not looking up from his game of All Might Beats Up Household Objects. He got me these clothes, and they're kind of gross. Can you make clothes? Sure. Would you like something in particular? I need a school uniform. Deku said we had school tomorrow. And a hero costume. You've probably seen mine, right? And and a cool t-shirt, and some comfy pants, and a hoodie, because it's starting to get cold. Midoriya gave her an apologetic look, but Yayorozu only smiled warmly. Sure thing, Kachan. I'll start on your uniforms. Why don't you find an outfit in your closet that you like, and I'll just make a smaller copy. Okay. Deku, lift me! Why don't you let Uraraka show you how her quirk works? <laughs> Still too weak to lift me? Fine, show me, pink face. Uraraka patted him on the back lightly, and immediately Bakugo was rising towards the ceiling. His eyes were wide as he flailed a little to find his balance. I'm flying, he said in disbelief. Huh? I told you, Karchan, I make things float. I guess it's all right, Bakugo conceded, pulling open his closet as he continued to float. Midoriya took his hand lightly when he got to the right height, smiling when Bakugo glared at him. Can't I hold on to you, Karchan? You promised to protect me. Fine, he sighed with exasperation. I guess you can, but give me my hands in case I have to fight for you. Hold my shirt like you always do. Okay, thank you. He gripped the back of Bakugo's shirt lightly, holding him in place as he flipped through the hangers, grinning at a few things that he came across. This one, he announced, throwing some kind of intricate skulls and dragon shirt at the bed that Midoriya was pretty sure Bakugo had never actually worn. And this one. It looks soft. He threw a jacket at the bed, and Midoriya slowly lowered him towards the ground before Uraraka released her quirk. I guess you're kind of useful sometimes, Floaty, Bakugo conceded as he pulled some soft sweatpants from a drawer. You gotta learn to fight real good with your fists, though. Thanks for the advice, Karchan. Uraraka caught on quickly, it seemed. Yayorozu was almost finished producing clothing, stacking it neatly on the edge of the bed and she smiled as she finished off by reproducing the tacky shirt and fluffy hoodie. There you go, Karchan. I hope they're all to your satisfaction. They look fine, he nodded. Maybe I'll call you sometimes when I need things to fight with. I'll be happy to help. Do you think you could do me a favour before I leave? Uraraka requested, taking a step forward boldly. I'm sorry for picking you up without asking before. Whatever. What do you need? It's so I'm picking on you. I don't like people who pick on girls. No, no, nothing like that. Thank you, though. I just wondered if I could touch your hair. My hair? Why? Because it looks so nice and shiny. I wanted to see if it's soft. Weird idiot. Bakugo huffed, folding his arms again and looking away. Fine, but only for a second. Thank you. Midoriya watched fondly as she ruffled the blonde locks. He knew all too well how silky Bakugo's hair was, despite its appearance and Uraraka's eyes lit up when she learnt the secret. Wow, Karchan, you have such amazing hair. Thank you. Whatever, weirdo. Deku, what are you making me for dinner? Am I making you dinner? You're meant to be my wife, aren't you? The girls bristled a little, and Midoriya gave them another apologetic smile, waving his hands a little frantically as he tried to come up with the words to explain. Bakugo was already distracted by the figures again, lining them up neatly, and didn't seem to notice the looks being shot his way. It's that or I gotta cook for you, right? But I'm not allowed to use a stove. You're big, so you're probably allowed. One of us always has to cook, because... Because... You know, like parents do. Love? Bakugo sneered, shaking his head stubbornly. No way! Because that's what husbands and wives do. They cook for each other and take out the garbage when it's smelly and get rid of scary bugs. Pretty sure that's love, Karchan. Ew. The girls seemed to have softened a little, so Midoriya took the opportunity to wave goodbye and usher them out of the door, sighing with relief when he sank back into the carpet. Bakugo looked up at him expectantly, still waiting for an answer, and after a moment, Midoriya smiled. Okay, what do you want for dinner? Something spicy. <laughs> yeah, I figured. Anything in particular, though? Whatever you can cook without making me sick. Ouch. Okay, got it. Let's go downstairs and you can watch me cook in case I do something bad. Fine. Thankfully, their classmates gave them a wider berth, returning to their own lives as Midoriya set Bakugo on the counter and gave him some eggs to crack. He did his tasks meticulously, as always, 
not spilling a single piece of shell into the bowl, and began to beat them up when Midori handed him a pair of chopsticks. It didn't take long for them to get some food together. Bakugo's plate seasoned liberally with his jar of spices from the pantry, labelled with a skull and crossbones logo, after one of Kaminari's funnier kitchen mishaps. Bakugo pushed vegetables stubbornly around his plate when they began to eat, ignoring the myriad of eyes gathered to watch them in the kitchen. He pouted when Midoriya gave him a look, and Midoriya reached over to poke a piece of broccoli at his lips lightly. Eat up, Kachan. You gotta get big and strong for when you're number one hero, right? I don't want vegetables. I can get strong without them. Hmm. I guess I won't eat mine either, then. He shoved them aside on his plate, biting at a bigger piece of meat instead, and Bakugo huffed at him stubbornly. You gotta eat yours, stupid Deku. They're healthy. But if Karchan doesn't eat his, I don't need to eat mine. You do. They're good for you. Then so do you, right? Ugh. Bakugo stabbed a carrot with a vengeance. You always gotta copy me, don't you? Karchan is the most amazing person I know. I want to be just like him. I know, he mumbled, shoving a couple beans inside his mouth. Eat your stupid vegetables, Deku. Okay. He matched Bakugo bite for bite, making sure the wary eyes couldn't catch him finishing and immediately stop. And soon enough, Bakugo was swallowing his last pee. See, stupid Deku, it's not that hard. Thanks, Karchan. You were right, as always. It's easier to just pander. Uraraka was whispering off to one side. He's even more stubborn than he used to be. Or is now, in the future? You know what I mean. As soon as they finished eating, Bakugo's friends were ready to pounce, buzzing with excitement. Kachan! Ashido said excitedly. I'm back! I missed you! Do you remember me, sweetie? No, but I'm gonna blow you up if you call me that again, he said flatly. But Kachan, you've been my boyfriend since middle school! You're a bad liar. Bakugo screwed up his face. I promised to marry Deku. I can't date anyone else, stupid. I told you, Kirishima said triumphantly. The engagement is still intact. What do you want, stupid hair? Bakugo grumbled. You lie to me too. I ain't lie. I am your best friend. I just, uh, I always call you Katsuki because it was special. Yeah, because I'm your best friend, so it was just me. Everyone else calls you Kachan, but that's boring, you know? Bakugo contemplated it, staring him down, but Kirishima met his gaze with smiles and openness. Fine, he conceded. I don't get it, because Katsuki sounds lame, but fine. What do we do for fun at night? Tonight, I thought we'd watch a scary movie and eat loads of toasted marshmallows. Hmm. Okay, I'll do that. You're not allowed to laugh at Deku when he gets scared, though. Of course not. I would never. I'll look after you. Bakugo promised, reaching for Midoriya's hand. You can do it. Thanks, Kachan. I appreciate it. Midoriya struggled to keep his laughter contained, tried to make his nodding look sincere. I just gotta wash the dishes first. You know, be a good wife and all. I guess I can help, Bakugo sighed. I'll dry them. Sounds good. Thanks, Kachan. He hoisted the boy up onto the bench and sat him down with a tea towel as he began to fill the sink. Bakugo's friends joined them to help out, forming an efficient chain that ended with Ashido and Kirishima hurriedly putting things back in the cupboards. Done, she announced happily as she closed the last door. Movie time! Bakugo slid down and grabbed at Midoriya's hand, dragging him through the living room area and climbing onto a sofa. The television was already on and ready, and Midoriya had a sick feeling that Bakugo's supposed friends just wanted to see Bakugo jump or scream or cry. The joke was on them, though. Bakugo would never not as long as he needed to protect his Deku. They got about halfway through the movie before Bakugo tensed up, and Midoriya shifted a little when Bakugo crawled into his lap, reaching for the hem of the blanket and pulling it up to his nose. I don't want you to be scared, he explained stubbornly. You can hold on to me, okay? Thanks, Kachan. He wound his arms lightly around Bakugo's waist and felt the boy sink into him, getting comfortable on Midoriya's thighs. Every jump scare made him tense in a hurry, squeezing the blanket, and after a few more minutes, Midoriya reached for his hand. Can I hold it? he whispered. Y yeah, if you have to, stupid Deku, he stuttered, clutching at Midoriya's strong fingers with both his fists. I gotta protect you, after all. Thanks, Kachan. He stuffed another handful of marshmallows in his mouth when the scary parts died down again. His cheeks puffed out like a little hamster to hold them all, and Midoriya couldn't help but poke at one lightly. Quit it, he complained around a mouthful. I'm eating. 
Ashido looked back at them and quickly stifled a giggle of her own, nudging the boys to look and subtly snapping a photo of Bakugo the Marshmallow Monster. By the time the movie ended, Bakugo was half asleep in Midoriya's lap, his head flopped back against his firm chest, his eyes barely open. What did you think, Ka-chan? Kaminari asked with a hint of teasing. Scary, right? Nope, Bakugo yawned. Not scary. Not at all? I'm not Deku, stupid. I'm not scared of anything. Good to know, Ashido grinned. So you're not going to be scared alone in your bedroom in the dark where one of those monsters could crawl out of your mirror at any second and creep under your blankets and- And I blast them in the stupid face because I have a quirk that I can actually fight with, Bakugo pointed out stubbornly. What can you do? Me? I make acid from my hands. Bakugo froze for a moment, staring at her with wide eyes. Amadoria grinned. Acid? Uh-huh, like this. She picked up an old magazine from the coffee table, immediately eating her way through it, and for a moment, Midoriya saw Bakugo's eyes shine. That's way more useful than the other girls, he declared, trying to keep his voice impassive. I guess that's why I let you be my friend, huh? And I make electricity, Denki informed him excitedly, lighting sparks up in his hands to shock people. Oh, huh. And I can make my skin harder, like a shield, or to make my punches extra strong. Hmm. I guess I picked better friends than stupid Deku did. All they wanted to do was pick me up and touch my hair and not watch cool movies and actually fight like real heroes. You let them touch your hair? It's just hair, he grimaced. What's the big deal? Can I too? Ashida requested. Just a little? It's soft, I already know, he grumbled, sitting up a little. Fine, make it fast though. She ruffled his spike with both hands, practically squealing over it and Bakugo's cheeks burned red as the guys laughed at him fondly. Thanks, Kachan. You're right, it's super soft. I know how to take care of myself, he grumbled. Not like stupid Deku. He reached up to Midoriya's curls pointedly, pulling a face as he tugged at them. You need to learn to comb your hair. I try, Kachan. It just doesn't stay that way. Do I have to do everything myself around here? Does your mum say that line a lot? Midoriya asked, as the others stifled their giggles. No, stupid. My dad does. Mom doesn't do anything. Now, come on. It's past your bedtime, and you still gotta take a bath. Okay, Kachan. You're right. We should get ready for bed. He smiled when Bakugo said his goodnights to his friends without prompting or hinting, then waved at them faintly as they finally let the dams burst on their giggles. I told you, Kachan. It doesn't go. Midoriya sighed fondly as Bakugo tugged at his hair. You're just lucky you got nice hair. I gotta learn, Bakugo said stubbornly. I want you to look nice when we get married. I'll figure something out. Don't worry. He still continued dragging the comb through Midoriya's damp hair, making sure it was at least tangle-free, even if he couldn't make it neat. And Midoriya smiled softly as he let his eyes sink closed. Are you falling asleep already? No, I'm just comfy, the boy assured softly. Hey, do you think you could sleep here with me tonight? In case you have nightmares about the monsters. Uh-huh. I knew you were scared, stupid Deku, he scoffed. Fine, I guess I gotta stay then. I'm not scared, Karchan. I know you would never let a monster hurt me. Obviously. Satisfied with his work, Bakugo set the comb down and dragged Midoriya onto the bed, bundling him up in the duvet and reaching for a book from the bedside table. Get comfy, Deku, so I can read you your bedtime story. You're going to read to me. Duh, your mum isn't here. Who else is gonna? Okay. Midoriya hid his grin beneath the blankets, snuggling in and tucking them up over Bakugo's lap. What are you gonna read to me, Karchan? I'm gonna find you a hero story. He flicked through the pages of the history textbook, searching for familiar names and words among the kanji, and Midoriya gestured for the book. I saw one I want to hear, Karchan. Okay, you can pick. He flipped until he found the case study section, picking out one that looked particularly easy to read, and pointed it out as he handed the book back. Can you read me this one, Karchan? The title says it's about the first heroes, right? Mm, yeah, you're right, it does, he agreed, after careful consideration, identifying the most complicated of the kanji. Okay, I can read this one for you if you want. He curled up beside Midoriya with the book reading the article carefully, 
and Midoriya smiled softly as he stroked Bakugo's back, just the way he always liked it. Bakugo practically began to purr under his touch, didn't bother to object, just relaxed a little as he continued to read. It wasn't until they were around halfway through that he began to lag, his eyelids sinking lower. But then, after about twenty... Bakugo paused to yawn, rubbing at his eyes. Twenty years, it seemed... Midoriya closed his eyes and slowed his breathing, Bakugo making it through one more sentence before he glanced over and saw, yawning again. Are you asleep already? Midoriya remained silent. Dumb Deku, Bakugo said fondly. Should have told me you were tired. He set the book aside and turned out the light, curling into Midoriya's loose grip comfortably. Good night, Deku, he said quietly, planting a kiss on Midoriya's forehead. Sweet dreams. Midoriya woke up with tiny Bakugo curled in his arms, fists clutching at Midoriya's baggy t-shirt, a damp patch forming where the boy had drooled during the night. With a smile, he held on a little tighter, snuggling to snooze a little longer while he waited for the alarm to go off. The sun was just beginning to rise through the crack of the curtains, and normally Midoriya would be up finishing homework or going for a run. But today, this was far more appealing. Good morning he said softly, when Bakugo's long eyelashes fluttered open. Did you sleep well? Mm-hmm, he mumbled, yawning and freeing a hand from the soft cotton to rub at his eyes. Is it time for school? Not yet. We've got a little longer. Okay. I'll stay here with you then. Thanks. He rubbed his cheek lightly against Midoriya's chest, up and down over his sternum, but Midoriya didn't catch on until a tiny hand drifted down to his stomach. Are you... Checking me out, Karchan. What? No! It's okay. I got a bit stronger as I grew up. I wanted to try and keep up with you. Does Big Karchan still look after you? Bakugo's voice was barely a whisper. Huh? Of course. Why were your friends surprised? Oh, um... You know how your dad says that you should think a lot more about what you say before you say it? Mm Mm-hmm. You got a little better at it, but you're still... Well, Karchan is Karchan, right? No matter how old you get, you still say what you think. Be honest, stupid Deku. I know the stuff you're not saying. Sometimes, you come across as a little mean to people. I know you better than that, but the others don't. Not really. Was I mean to you? Bakugo looked up at him with wide eyes genuinely shocked at the words, and Midoriya quickly shook his head. Well, maybe a little, sometimes, but that was a long time ago. I promise, Karchan, we're good. We train together a lot, and you give me notes on my fighting and how I can get better, and you're always there to keep me safe. Of course I am, stupid. A husband has to look after his wife. Thank you. I appreciate it. You just gotta keep being good. No screaming. You don't do that anymore, right? Nuh-uh. Not since Karchan said he wouldn't marry me if I screamed. Good boy. Midoriya couldn't quite hold his laughter back, but thankfully Bakugo didn't seem to mind, shifting a little to lean his cheek against Midoriya's shoulder. And you got strong? Uh Uh-huh. But I'm not as strong as you. Obviously, Bakugo scoffed. But stronger than the rest of them, right? They're all really strong, Karchan. I know some of their quirks sound silly, but they're actually all really amazing. Bakugo hummed in contemplation, and Midoriya stroked his back lightly, smiling as he softened into the touch. He didn't get these moments anymore, didn't get to touch Bakugo like this. They'd been a little closer since Midoriya's own adventure as a toddler. There was a lot of marriage jokes thrown around, a lot of reminders to be good and not scream. But still, physically, they'd kept their distance, considering some of the photos his friends had shown him It felt like a strange loss, even if he didn't remember any of it. You're mumbling, Bakugo pointed out. Sorry. We don't cuddle anymore. Huh? You mumbled something about being distant. We don't cuddle. No. You, um, you decided you were too old to cuddle. Stupid Karchan, he mumbled, sighing into Midoriya's neck. You'll get scared and sad if I don't cuddle you. Why isn't he protecting you properly? He protect- He doesn't! Bakugo cut him off stubbornly. You all keep saying it. I'm grumpy and mean and I don't let people touch me. 
I heard them whispering, stupid Deku. I'm sorry. Midoriya hugged him tightly, ignoring the stray tears that fought their way through his iron will. I won't lie to you. I promise. Why don't people like me? Everyone likes you. You're adorable. The other me. I know it must seem weird, since you're used to having a bunch of friends, Midoriya acknowledged. But you chose it, Karchan. You chose the people you wanted to let in, and the people you didn't want to bother with. None of our classmates hate you, I swear. Some of them even helped rescue you when... When? Uh, nothing? You said you wouldn't lie, Deku. Why did I need rescuing? Some of the villains liked you too, and wanted you to be their friend instead. We came and helped take you away, because people were worried about you. They wanted to help. Hmm. I guess that's okay. I should have blown the villains up, though. You fought super well, Midoriya smiled softly. Don't worry, you were amazing, like always. So people still like me, even though they said I'm mean? Yeah, you're our lovable grouch. Okay. You know who likes you most, though? Who? Me? He pulled Bakugo in, nuzzling his ticklish neck and kissing his cheeks repeatedly, amused when little giggles sneaked out of him despite the blush they caused. Deku! he whined, with no real conviction behind it. Could it out, stupid? Never. Tiny arms looped around his neck, tucking himself under Midoriya's chin and out of the rage of the kisses, and Midoriya hugged him back just as tight. You know who likes you second best? Mmm, probably stupid hair. Maybe. It's a pretty close call. Who then? All Might. Bakugo froze at the sound of his idol's name slowly pushing himself back to hunt for teasing or lying in Midoriya's face. All Might likes me. You want to meet him? For real? Let's start getting ready for school, Midoriya grinned. I'll take you to meet him before class. You're the best, Deku. I won't ever call you stupid again. Ever again until tomorrow, right? Uh Uh-huh. Okay, Midoriya laughed, sitting up reluctantly. Let's go then. You can carry me. Bakugo mumbled, tugging at Midoriya's pant leg as he looked around warily at the stairs aimed their way. I'll let you. You want me to carry you? That's not what I said! Okay, okay, Midoriya grinned, hauling him up to rest on one hip. Sorry, I didn't hear you properly. Hmm. He held Bakugo carefully as they made their way through the halls, his free hand knocking lightly on the office door, while a tiny grip clutched tighter at his shirt. It's me, Midoriya, he called. Can I come in? One moment, Midoriya, my boy! Bakugo's eyes widened at the sound of the voice, and Midoriya laughed at him fondly. He had sent a quick text to All Might on his way, briefly explaining the situation so that man could have the chance to slip into his muscle form. He felt a little bad for asking, but they wouldn't linger for long, and he knew All Might didn't mind the request. Aha! Good morning, young Midoriya, young Bakugo! When the door slid open and the words came from his lips, Bakugo started to tremble. He put up a valiant effort, trying to pretend he wasn't excited and nervous and confused all at the same time. But Midoriya and All Might could both see right through him. I suppose you don't remember me, do you, my boy? My name is All Might. I've been teaching your heroics classes since you started school here. It's nice to meet you, All Might, Bakugo squeaked, cringing at the sound of his own voice. Sorry, I, um... No need to apologise! It must be hard to get used to being in a smaller body again. Midoriya smiled at the easy out All Might offered him, Bakugo nodding along in a hurry, and when All Might took a step back, Midoriya followed him into the office. I hope you've been keeping out of trouble, young Bakugo. Not causing any trouble for our Midoriya, are you? N- no, of course not. I protect him always. Karchan is the best protector, Midoriya grinned, setting him down on the couch and ruffling his messy spikes. He always takes care of me always did. That's good to hear. All Might managed to keep his surprise hidden, and Midoriya wondered when he becomes such a skillful actor. It's a hero's job to protect people, after all. Especially people who can't protect themselves, Bakugo agreed. Deku is useless, so I had to make sure he didn't get hurt. Oh, uh, I guess maybe you're a little less useless now. You said you got strong. I'm still nothing compared to you, Midoriya grinned. 
I still need you to keep protecting me, okay? Duh, Bakugo scoffed, folding his chubby arms. A husband always protects his wife, I keep telling you. All Might disguised his laughter as a spluttering cough. Thankfully, Bakugo seemed to fall for it. I'm glad you think so, All Might nodded once. Protecting people is very important, after all. Uh Uh-huh. You can't win if you don't protect people. If people get hurt, then even if you beat the bad guy, you still lost a fight. And heroes always win. So I can't let people get hurt, or I'm not being a hero. That's exactly right, young Bakugo. I didn't expect you to retain so much of your intelligence when the quirk hit you. You think I'm intelligent? Of course I do. Bakugo's face burned red as his eyes, and Midoriya grinned as he patted a tiny shoulder fondly. You're one of the top students in our class, Karchan. You always get the best grades. Of course I do, Bakugo said smugly, lifting his chin with a newfound confidence. Like I would let anyone beat me. Speaking of which, we'd better head to class, Midoriya said apologetically, glancing at the clock. We'll see you after lunch, all might. Have a good morning. Have a good morning, Bakugo echoed. It was nice to meet you. Um, again, I guess. You too, Bakugo, my boy. I'll see you in heroics class. The moment the door closed behind them, Bakugo was burying his face in Midoriya's pant leg, a quiet, drawn-out whine coming from his lips, and Midoriya grinned as he laid a hand gently on his blonde hair. It's okay, Karchan. I was nervous too, when it happened to me. Mm. You got turned little too, right? Mm Mm-hmm. And you took care of me, like any good hero or husband would. It must have been hard to take care of you in a hero school, Bakugo mumbled. The useless Deku, I mean. Yeah, everyone said I was a nightmare, Midoriya agreed. I screamed a bunch, and I wouldn't let anyone else near me. I only stayed with you. I bet he... Um, I... Didn't mind? He's... I'm used to protecting you, even when you're a pain. People said you were super nice to me. You carried me around with you and made sure I was happy and comfy all the time. And you got me juice boxes. Good. Bakugo watched as Midoriya slid the massive door open, waving him in inside before he closed it again behind them. He showed Bakugo to their seats, helping him unpack his bag, and stifled a laugh when Bakugo could barely see over the desktop. Here, let me... Yayurozu insisted quickly when Bakugo got the familiar annoyed look on his face. I'll make you a big cushion. Give me a moment. She lifted the hem of her shirt to produce it from her stomach, and Bakugo watched in fascination as the thick, firm pillow began to slip from her body. I guess it's kind of cool, Bakugo conceded as thanks, blushing faintly as she positioned it on his chair carefully. Your quirk, I mean. Thanks, Karchan. He clambered back into his seat this time propped up high enough to reach his books, and Midoriya made sure everything he would need from his bag lay within reach of his tiny hands. Morning, Deku! He smiled when Uraraka approached them, throwing her arms around his waist, but a resounding boom wiped it away in a hurry, reaching uselessly as Uraraka flew across the room. She slapped herself with her own quirk to avoid the impact, and immediately Midoriya's eyes went to Bakugo in front of them, with a dark look on his face and his hands still outstretched. Don't touch him, stupid head, he demanded, the room falling silent as they watched. Don't you know anything? What? She stuttered out, too surprised to worry about the burn marks on her shirt that thankfully didn't reach her skin. Deku doesn't like being touched. You've got to ask him if you want to hug him. Don't you know anything about consent? Uraraka's mouth fluttered open and closed like a bad impression of a goldfish, and after a moment... Midoriya laid his hand on Bakugo's head gently. Thanks, Karchan. She did ask, though. She knows. Huh? She, um, she sent me text. She always texts me before she comes in to ask if it's a bad day for touching or not. Oh, Bakugo contemplated, screwing up his face. You didn't tell me. I know. I'm sorry. I should have. Everyone here knows, for the record. They all ask me first. It's okay. Hmm. Fine. Is there something you think you should say? To Uraraka? Why? He pouted. I aim for her clothes, and I didn't blast her that hard. She told me she could make stuff float. It was never going to hurt her. Your explosions still hurt, even if they don't burn or make you hit something, Karchan? They do. Yes. Oh. Hmm. Fine. I'm sorry, I guess. 
You're supposed to be a hero, though. That shouldn't have been enough to hurt. I'm okay, Uraraka laughed awkwardly. It only hurt a little bit. Thanks for not aiming at my face this time, and for not using your whole strength. It wouldn't be much of a hero if I killed you for just a hug, Bakugo mumbled, climbing back into his chair. You've got to do worse than that. Wow, tiny ba- Kachan has some self-awareness, Kaminari declared. Good job, tiny Kachan. Not tiny, he pouted. Don't be a stupid head. Sorry, Kachan. Didn't mean to offend. Hm. Bakugo busied himself with flicking through his notebook, looking over the neat lines of his older self's handwriting, organised carefully into sections and chapters and dates. After a moment of contemplation, he replaced it with a piece of loose paper, pushing his book aside, and Midoriya eyed him for a long moment. Everything okay, Kachan? Yeah. You sure? I'll be mad if I mess it up, he explained quietly. I should make my notes separate, so then I can put them in the book when I'm big again. That's a really smart idea, Kachan. Well done. Considering he hadn't even started school yet, Midoriya wasn't quite sure how useful the notes would be anyway, or if he'd even understand half the words spoken to them. But he knew Bakugo would do his best at any rate. Maybe he'd be extra attentive himself today. Make enough notes to give a copy to Bakugo, big Bakugo, at a later date. The bell rang to start class, and everyone quieted down immediately, Bakugo paying more attention than Midoriya had ever seen when their teacher walked in. Maybe this wouldn't be so hard after all. After their sleepy morning chat, Midoriya thought maybe Bakugo would be a little nicer to their friends in class. He was mistaken. What do you mean I can't join in? he snarled. That's not fair. Karchan, calm down, Midoriya said in a hushed voice. I didn't get to either, but if you're good, you'll get to watch. I don't want to watch, Bakugo fumed. I want to fight and practice and learn stuff. What's the big deal? He's the same size as me and he gets to fight. He pointed a stubborn finger Mineta's way and Midoriya had to stifle a laugh. Some of his classmates weren't so kind, their laughter ringing out across the training grounds and with a long sigh, All Might conceded a nod. Fine, I suppose you can be Mineta's partner then. We're only sparring today, it can't do much harm. I knew you would get it, All Might, Bakugo praised with a grin. A hero has to get all the practice they can. You're very right. All Might smiled softly. I'm sorry we doubted you, young Bakugo. You can call me Karchan too, you know. It's not just my friends who do. And you can be my friend anyway, if you want. Bakugo tied his tiny mask on carefully, and Midoriya clasped a hand over his mouth to keep from squeaking at the cuteness. What's the purple midget's quirk, Deku? His name's Mineta, he pointed out, knowing it would be futile anyway. The balls on his head are sticky. He can pull them off and throw them and stuff. Is that all? Bakugo scoffed. What a dumb quirk. How are you meant to fight people with that? Well, he can trap people in place, Midoriya offered. Or tie people together with them. Or climb buildings with them. Or... That's not fighting, Bakugo sneered taking up a fighting pose far too reminiscent of All Might's for their classmates not to notice. Come on, bullhead, fight me. He's four years old, Mineta scoffed when Kaminari leaned over to whisper a warning at him. What harm can he do? Midoriya had been about to warn Bakugo to be gentle, but with those words, he changed his mind. Instead, crouching down to whisper in his ear, sometimes he's really gross to the girls. He tries to peek in their changing room. What? Bakugo demanded, whirling around to see Midoriya's dead serious face. You're not joking. How is he meant to be a hero? He'll grow out of it one day. I'll beat it out of him today. Go for it, Kachan. You'll make the girls very happy. Other than a few pairs picked to go first, the rest of the class backed away to give them space, watching as most of them fell serious. But Bakugo just seemed to grow more angry. Remember, this is just a practice bar, All Might reminded them in his booming voice. There's no need to genuinely injure anyone. Take your marks. And three, two, one, begin. The moment the word left his lips, Bakugo launched himself forward, slamming a hand straight into Manetta's face and blasting him with everything he had. Thankfully, or maybe unfortunately, his power levels were much lower than his modern-day fighting, 
because Mineta had no time to defend himself, no time to react, other than letting out a loud squeak of pain as he hit the ground. Do you give up? Bakugo demanded. No! He switched hands, and in an instant, Mineta's hands were in the air, signalling his surrender. Bakugo didn't back off right away, and just as Midoriya opened his mouth to call out, he saw Bakugo's lips move. If you do that gross stuff when I'm big, you're gonna die. Uh, understood, B Bakugo. He climbed back onto his feet, leaving Mineta in the dust as the other pairs continued to fight, and walked straight up to All Might with an unexpected confidence in his eyes. All Might, can I fight an actual hero next? Ah, sure, young but Karchan. I think that could be arranged. Midoriya settled Bakugo on a fence to watch, letting him slump back against his chest and stroked his spiky hair lightly as the final group got ready to fight. What do you think, Karchan? Most of them have been boring, but I had fun fighting. I'm glad. What did you think of Todoroki-kun? Who? Fire and ice. Oh, his quirk is cool, but not as cool as mine. Yeah, that's what I figured. Midoriya smiled, leaning his chin on Bakugo's head and his elbows on the railing, shrouding Bakugo in his body heat when he began to shiver. You'd get real annoyed fighting him, right? I can take him right now! I didn't mean it like that. It would just be a frustrating fight. Bakugo considered this for a moment, then nodded once, eyes roaming as their classmates began to move. He would keep me far away, Bakugo acknowledged. I'd have to blow him up, and I wouldn't get to punch him and stuff. Yeah. I could do it, obviously, Midoriya teased, getting a knowing glare in return. Midoriya pointed to where Kirishima and Shoji were setting up to fight, smiling into the soft blonde locks. This should be good, he explained. Maybe watch them. Todoroki took a few steps closer, pausing to consider them, then joining them anyway. Good work today, Midoriya, he said in his typically flat voice. You've improved this term. Thanks, Todoroki-kun. With a look on his face that Midoriya couldn't quite read, Bakugo shifted himself closer to Midoriya's warmth, reaching up to tangle his fingers in the green fabric. When Todoroki nodded at him briefly, he conceded one in return, but still his grip stayed firm on Midoriya's costume. You did well too, Bakugo, Todoroki acknowledged. I wasn't expecting you to keep up, being small. Of course I did, Bakugo scoffed. Like I wouldn't. Midoriya and Todoroki exchanged tiny smiles over his head, recalling a thousand pulled punches and slowed motions over the course of the afternoon, but neither of them said a word of it as Bakugo watched the fights critically. When the class was dismissed, Bakugo insisted on walking on his own, a little slower than usual and a little more prone to stumbling on the rough ground, but determined all the same. It only took one ridge in the concrete path for it all to come crashing down, as Bakugo hit the ground heavily, spitting nonsensical words that Midoriya recalled hearing a lot before Bakugo learned how to swear. Oh my god, Kachan! Uraraka yelped. Don't! Midoriya cut in quickly, one hand keeping her back, another warning Kirishima to halt his path. It took him a moment, but he managed to choke out a laugh that sounded almost genuine. Come on, Kachan, don't be silly. There was a pause for a moment. Silence. Then Bakugo stumbled to his feet with an awkward smile. Yeah, he laughed. I'm coming. He brushed dirt from his pants and wiped blood from a scraped elbow on his shirt, then continued walking as if nothing had ever happened. Midoriya let out a sigh of relief, despite the looks of concern he got from their friends, and his smile was a little more genuine when he looked back at them. He'll hate you for the rest of his life if he thinks you're pitying him. By helping him up? Trust me. Bakugo looked back as they finally began to follow him again. Kirishima still looking oddly nervous about the whole situation, though Uraraka seemed to understand a little. Your quirk, he began, a little apprehensive. It's kind of strong. Uh, thanks, Kachan, Kirishima laughed. You seem decent, he continued. You can join my hero agency. Kirishima gaped at him, and Bakugo frowned a little when he saw the jaw drop. I'm honoured, Kirishima stumbled out. Thank you, Katsuki. Uh, uh, Kachan? It's fine, he shrugged. You can call me whatever. Oh my god, Kirishima choked out in a hushed tone. He actually likes me! Duh, Uraraka and Midoriya chorused, exchanging a quick grin with it. 
He likes me. Bakugo giggled as Midoriya threw him at the duvet, squirming away only to be held in place by Midoriya's strong hand. Deku, stop! He laughed as Midoriya began to roll him across the floor. Cut it out! Make me. As he rolled again, the blanket gathered around him, trapping him in a burrito of fluffy white material that seemed to smother him in giggles too. Bedtime for Kachan. Never! Time to sleep! He scooped the burrito into his arms, holding it tight, and Bakugo squirmed against his grip. I want to stay here, Deku! I want to watch TV with you guys! It's just a silly TV. You never like it anyway. But I want to stay! Midoriya paused for a moment and took a look at the sullen expression on the tiny face, tilting his head as he contemplated. You don't want to be alone? I'm not scared! I didn't say you were. Bakugo looked away, his lower lip jutting out, and Midoriya pulled at it lightly. Talk. Mm, no. Talk, Karchan. It's over tonight, right? Midoriya caught on quickly, his face falling. Yeah, he nodded. 48 hours is up sometime early tomorrow. You'll probably be back to normal by the time you wake up. Then I want to stay. As long as I can. Okay, Midoriya nodded understandingly. You can stay. He kept Bakugo bundled in the blankets, but took him through to where their friends were watching some movie on the sofa, smiling when they squished over to make room for Midoriya to sit. He flopped down and held Bakugo tight in his lap, still bundled in his blanket, his eyelids still drooping as he leaned against Midoriya's chest. Did you have fun today, Karchan? Yayurozu asked gently. Uh-huh, he nodded faintly, rolling his head to the side to look at her. Fighting was fun. I'm glad. One by one, people began to drift off to their bedrooms with yawns and apologies, but still, Bakugo demanded to stay doing his best to keep his eyes open the whole way through. Hey, he interrupted when Todoroki started to excuse himself. Be my friend, okay? Sure. Tomorrow, I mean, Bakugo explained, ignoring the gapes pointed his way. When, you know. Okay, Todoroki agreed with a small nod. I'll do my best. Do you think I'll make it hard? For the first time Midoriya could ever recall, a smirk crossed Todoroki's lips. Obviously. Midoriya woke up to yelling and swearing, running a hand through his hair with a groan as he sat up. He'd fallen asleep on the couch at some point in the night, and he rubbed at his sleepy eyes. He spotted a big white duvet discarded on the floor in front of him. Karchan? He called tiredly. What's going on? He stumbled to his feet and threw to the kitchen to where Ashido and Kirishima were exchanging conspiring looks, while sparks burst in Bakugo's hands. "'Oh, you're big,' Midoriya said dumbly, eyeing him over. "'You should probably put some clothes on. Those shorts are... uh, they've seen better days.' "'You shut the fuck up!' Bakugo demanded, turning back to him for the briefest of moments to glare, before his eyes went straight back to Kirishima. "'Fucking delete it!' No way, dude! Kaminari's face lit up when he stepped in the doorway and saw Bakugo looking back at him. But the moment he opened his mouth, Bakugo slammed a sizzling hand over it. If you dare call me that stupid nickname, I'm going to blast you into so many pieces that even a time reversal quirk can't fix you. You remember what happened? Kaminari squawked. No, idiot, but I'm not fucking stupid. Midoriya couldn't quite hold back his laughter a giggle escaping him, and suddenly Kaminari was forgotten, the hand fisting in Midoriya's shirt and slamming him into a wall. And you, he scowled. What shitty stuff did you do to me, nerd ass? Nothing, I wouldn't. Not after you took care of me. He was really good, Bakugo, Kirishima confirmed. He tried to stop the rest of us from giving you shit. Yeah, right. It's true, Ashido conceded with a hint of reluctance. We tried to get all sorts of embarrassing videos, and he shut it down every time. Fucking whatever. I didn't do anything, Midoriya shrugged. You took care of yourself. I didn't need to do anything. Had your fucking hands all over me, didn't you? You asked him to, Kirishima informed him, hardening his arm as he carefully reached to split them up. I know you're mad at us, Bakugo, 
but leave Midoriya out of it. He was just as good to you as you were to him. I saw all of it, remember? Bakugo conceded his grip and growled as he pulled away from them both, clenching his fists as he contemplated his next move. Some of my stuff is in your room, Karchan. You borrowed it? Do you mind if I come get it now, before it becomes a thing? Whatever, he grumbled, storming towards the elevator. Like I want your shit. They rode up to his room in silence, and Bakugo watched with red cheeks as Midoriya gathered the scattered action figures from the floor and desk. You should keep this, Midoriya said softly, when he picked up the discarded mini-hero costume. The mask, at least. Why the fuck would I want to do that? With a little smile, he handed it over in explanation, and Bakugo froze when he saw the shiny silver autograph drawn on one side. You said you wanted the experience of getting it? even though when you got big again you wouldn't care any more. Fine, he sighed, draping it over his desk lamp. Was I super embarrassing? Not at all. Kachan is Kachan. You know what I mean. Midoriya smiled, shaking his head faintly. You were always worried about what you'd think when you got back to normal. You didn't want to do anything to make yourself embarrassed or mad. You demanded to join in with sparring classes and beat up Mineta for being unhero-like, and prove to your friends that you weren't scared of horror movies. Fucking hell, they actually let me spar? It was really sweet. I think Ashido and Kaminari have videos. You should watch them. They're actually not bad. I shouldn't have grabbed you. Midoriya shook his head immediately, ignoring the flush in Bakugo's face as he turned away and sat down on the carpet. Better me than someone who would get mad, or hurt. Tentatively, he joined Bakugo on the rug, sitting with just inches between their backs, and for a comfortable minute, they just sat quietly. You said I could still be your wife, Midoriya teased gently. You said you had to protect me forever. Yeah. In a momentary lapse of judgment, Bakugo leaned back, pressing their warm backs together, and Midoriya closed his eyes to savour it. We probably need to talk about some stuff, he conceded. We do, but it's almost time for school. I made extra notes for you, just in case your own ones aren't too helpful. Oh, um, thanks. Wow, Karchan, Midoriya teased. I haven't heard that word in a while. Shut up, stupid wife! Midoriya burst into a fit of giggles, and with the tiniest of smiles, Bakugo looked back at him, at the hands clasped over his mouth as he tried to stifle the sound. Idiot, he breathed fondly. Come on, school. Let's talk after, okay? Come to my room tonight, and we'll talk. Okay. With a last ruffle of blonde spikes, Midoriya retreated to find his uniform, smiling to himself as he wondered what Bakugo would say later, whether, maybe, just maybe, this time he wouldn't feel like he'd lost something special. Maybe he would even show Bakugo the selfies they'd taken together. But only after he'd backed them up onto three other drives obviously. Hey there guys, girls, and non-binary pals. It's Elena, and I hope you're having a lovely day today. Oh, I finally finished this fic. I have been struggling so hard with making this fic. I don't know what it was. Like, mm, I was just re-recording and going over it like again and again and again. So, uh, Sorry if the voice acting's a bit shit on this one. I don't know what's been up with me this week, but, you know, we finally made it through. And honestly, I think it's so worth it because I just love this fix so much. I love the aging fix. This series is so, so, so good. Please go send your love to the original author because, honestly, they deserve it because this is just such a good series and it just makes me, like, chortle. I had such a, like, fun time with like so many parts of this I was making myself laugh a lot um <laughs> you know when I wasn't like screaming at myself for never getting any of the bloody lines right some of them you know what clearly they were just too funny for me and I wasn't I didn't have the skill to back it up <laughs> but be sure to let me know what you thought of the fic down below in the comments what was your favorite part who do you want to see de-aged because this is a long series and a lot of people are going to get de-aged, but I am interested in who you're most excited to see get de-aged because it's going to be great. Um, also, you know, tell me how you're doing this day. 
how are you? You all right? How have things been? It's been like four days or something. I don't know. It might have been more than that. I don't even know when I last uploaded it was anymore. I don't even know where I am anymore. <laughs> Guess that's just what happens when you don't have a schedule. You sucks to be me. But <laughs> if you liked the video and you enjoy the things that I make, be sure to like the video, you know, if you liked it, and to boost my serotonin levels. You can also subscribe to be notified whenever I make new videos. If you liked this video, if you like this fic, uh, it is the first in the series, so I'm assuming you probably listened to the first one before this, but I also have lots of other videos. I have a fic where Aizawa gets de-aged, you'll see that on my channel. Uh, I've got a channel full of fics, you know? I'm just, if you take in a gander, I know probably most of you have listened to a lot of them because I see you coming back in the comments. But if you haven't, be sure to take a gander, have a look around and, you know, you can be sure to send me requests if you have things that you do want me to read and you enjoy because I always enjoy being able to do that. I do have an ongoing list going. It's very long, but obviously I have to read all the things that you send me before I record them and well before I even try and get permission to record them it's a long process but you know I'll get round to your fix eventually and trust and believe anyway before I start rambling off too much you can also join the discord if you want to join our weird fun kooky family it is linked in the description below but until I see you again be sure to practice some self-care be sure you're going to bed on time, be sure you're brushing your teeth, you're eating your five a day, and that you're gurgling down all that fresh H2O. No coffee doesn't count. No tea doesn't count. Just straight up water. Get your straight up water, pour it straight down your throat, drink it, okay? Because yes, this is a threat. And <laughs> I will catch you guys. A latest.